All right, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Event Trader here. Uh, going to bring Carmine Ate, our special situations analyst, on here to discuss what's going on in the healthcare sector. Basically, I'm sure a lot of people have seen um, the Medicare for All headlines that have been crossing as we've gotten a slate of new uh, potential Democratic candidates, and that's really rattled some of the industries there. We've seen commentary from United Healthcare last week in their earnings, talking about the potential disruption. And I believe, Carmine, you were on CNC earlier today, um, and they had made mention of some of the Medicare for All. And uh, I, it didn't seem like that they were all that cautious, but they did um, get into some of the discussions uh, on the call. Were you on that call, Carmine? Yeah, they basically uh, they basically said that, uh, that there's right now there's little appetite in Washington for to revisit health care reform, which I completely agree with. Uh, so, but they do welcome any uh, discussion. And, but uh, so they were a little bit more um, uh, downbeat um, versus, versus the UNA CEO on the topic, but uh, they did mention it and they did uh, take that into account. Okay, uh, real quick, um, commodity trader just throwing out a you guys long position idea. He is um, so he's taking along right now in that gas under the UGAS small and unusual position sizing there. So, Carmine, back to Medicare for all then. Um, why don't we get into a little bit of the weeds here because I think certainly people have been seeing the headlines and have been looking at the chances of a Democrat getting into the White House and what that could be. Uh, mean for some of these businesses, but when we're talking uh, Medicare for all, you, you want to break that down a little for people and uh, explain exactly what they're talking about? Yeah, this is basically a policy where the government would pay for the vast majority of medical services at the point of service. Uh, this would be negative for the health insurance industry overall because it basically would eliminate the need for private insurance for most medical services, not everything, but for most medical services, it would eliminate the need for private insurance. Uh, the hospitals, on the other hand, could benefit for some, some, from such a policy because they would uh, have far less instances where they would have to absorb the cost of uninsured patients. So, uh, just similar to um, the uh, similar to the uh, the aspects of the Obamacare uh, repeal efforts and the Supreme Court uh, rulings on that topic, the hospitals were the winners from Obamacare because they had far less uninsured patients that they had to absorb the cost from. So that if this go, um, if something like this goes through, it'll be a winner for the hospitals, but a definite loser for the health insurance industry. Okay, and for those looking to follow along, um, at 10.57, 10.59, and 11 a.m., I posted some of the stocks that you could uh, keep an eye out on. The first, 10.57, that's the insurers there. Uh, I do have to go back and add in UNH. 1059 is the hospital stocks, and at 11 is the um, biopharma names. And what I did was basically just posted what their opening price was, gave a 52-week high and low, and then their uh, returns for the last 12 months, 3 months, and 1 month. And you can kind of see the names that have been getting hit the hardest here and then put in some key support levels and finally when they're going to be reporting earnings. So we do have uh, this information laid out for you here. So um, Carmine, um, we, we talked a little bit about the stock moves here and we could uh, delve a little bit more into the weeds, but uh, what specifically triggered these moves? Obviously you went in and uh, gave what the Medicare for All is, but what are some of the comments we've been seeing from the uh, Democrat Democratic candidate uh, candidates that have been making the rounds, and what in particular has been kind of gripping uh, the fear in the markets? Well, basically, a lot of them are proposing it from Bernie Sanders, uh, Kamala Harris, and a few others are are supporting this. Uh, Joe Biden's about to enter the race this week. We're not sure what his position is going to be, but he's going to be one of the top tier candidates as well. Uh, but we're not sure what his position is going to be on the topic. Uh, there's several others that are against uh, Medicare for all, but uh, favor more incremental approaches to health care. So um, it, it, I think uh, that those comments, and in addition to the UNH CEO uh, last week on a conference call, after a pretty good quarter, uh, made the comments that it could destabilize the industry. I think that uh, definitely uh, caused a lot of these stocks to reverse lower and had uh, added their losses. 
Okay. Um, where do we stand in terms of, so I mean obviously we're looking at the 2020 race, and this is going to remain in the spotlight, but um, you've, we've been talking a little bit about uh, some of the hurdles that are facing this Medicare for All proposal. Uh, you want to break in a little, I mean we could start again with uh, what the early odds are for some for uh, the White House, just looking ahead at 2020. But also, I think it's important to get a little bit more into the weeds on what needs to happen in order for some of these bills to be passed. Yeah. So basically, the way I look at anything is when you want to make an investment decision based on a piece of legislation passing or not, you have to determine what the likelihood of that legislation passing is. Now, making um, uh, it's hard to make that determination based on a proposal from a presidential candidate because that's really like step one of a long process. It's basically like uh, making a decision on a football game based on what the coin toss is. So we have to you know, look at what the probability are that these things are going to pass. Now, right now, according to the betting markets, there's a 56% chance that the Democrat will retake the White House and a 44% chance that the Republican will keep the White House, more than likely President Trump in that case. So, right, and, but the key thing is it's going to be the Senate because every proposal, all these proposals that are being floated by these Democratic candidates are going to require 60 votes in the Senate. Now, right now, the betting odds have about a 65% chance that the Republicans will keep at least 51 votes in the Senate. And the odds of either party having 60 votes are slim to none. So that's what I think a lot of people are missing in this argument when they are – there's they're, these fears of this thing uh, coming through. Now, anything can happen. Anything can change between now and then. It's a long uh, election cycle. But as of right now, there is more than likely, uh, you know, there won't be enough votes in the Senate to pass something like Medicare for all, not to mention the fact that there's even divisions within the Democratic Party on this issue. The New York Times reported that while roughly 100 Democrats are in the House are supportive of it, there's another half of the caucus that's you know favors more incremental approaches. So this is something that um, has to be looked at in through that lens of what how likely it is to pass. And right now, based on the all the comments from within the Democratic Party and from the Republican Party, right now it, it doesn't seem likely that it would. Okay, now when we do get Obamacare passed, um, what, what were some of the differences? I mean, obviously the Democrats were controlling all three um, of, of the House, Senate, and the uh, White House, of course. Um, how are they able to get that through, and how is that different from Medicare for All? Well, the, the, the Democrats had 60 votes in the Senate after the 20, 2000, uh, starting in 2009. So there you go. So and right now we're on pace for 51. So again, it definitely 51 for the Republicans. 51 for the Republicans, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely looks like there's the potential for some buying opportunities coming in. And um, we're going to break a little bit more into the weeds going down the road with that. Uh, again, noted some of the um, key support levels that these stocks are coming in. A lot of them are breaking down towards 52-week lows, so I wanted to have that on there as well but um, Carmine with with that in mind um, from your just from your just take on the situation is there any of these particular industries that you see is getting oversold under these conditions yeah especially the health insurance companies themselves now the hospitals are interesting because they should theoretically benefit from something like this but the, those stocks are beginning um, you know getting hit a little bit as well but I, I would definitely look at the health insurance stocks. UNH had reported a really great quarter, and it sold off, you know, on these CEO comments. Now you have some support levels on there. I would take a look at those and see where uh, if there's any buying opportunities. But the, the the one thing is the one caveat to what I'm saying is there's there's going to be headlines, negative headlines on these stocks throughout the entire this year and in the next. And I think um, if, if if the market reacts the way the market's been reacting, these stocks will continue to fall. But if 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 a lot of the investors come to understand that the likelihood of this passing is very slim, 
then these stocks might reverse. Now, what will be a catalyst for that? We might get closer to the election, and uh, people might have projections up that the Republicans will keep the Senate, or that you know it would be very, very even in, handed in the Senate, or we might have a nominee from the Democratic Party that's against this proposal. That then I think that these stocks might re definitely reverse higher. But I think in the meantime, before any of that happens, you could kind of can follow the race and see how things are going. We could take a position while these stocks are lower. Now, um, keep trying not to get too uh, deep in the political weeds, um, are there any Democratic candidates that these industries might feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, that we should, if we see them start taking the lead? Well, right now there's about five or six that are in the lead, and most of them support Medicare, Medicare for All. Uh, but however, uh, like I said, Joe Biden is about to enter the race this this week, and he has to disclose what his position will be. If he discloses that he is for this, I think these stocks could take another a leg lower because that uh, many of the candidates in the top tier, again, understanding that it's going to be a tough road past the Senate. But I'm just saying that, uh, and the initial sure. reaction might be lower. On, on that news, but uh, Joe Biden is about to enter the race this week. We'll see what his position is. But if he takes a position contrary to it, contrary to Medicare for all, then I think we might see a little bit of a bounce. But it's hard to tell because, again, this is going to be an issue that's going to go on for the next uh, months. And uh, candidates can change their positions. There might be other people that move into the top tier, but right now the top tier is dominated from people that do support that, that proposal. <laughs> Any idea, are there any institutions out there at all currently putting together a study on these proposals that, that we should be on the lookout for? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I definitely uh, do think that will come uh, a, little later, a little later as we get closer to the election season, uh, definitely after there is a nominee. Um, also, when, there, when a bill is proposed, the, the main analysis will come from the uh, – the, the Congressional Budget Office, right, what, what it will cost and who it will impact and blah, blah, blah. So that's that's definitely something to watch out for. Okay, and uh, when should we be expecting the Biden headlines? Uh, he's supposed to enter the race this week as far as I've been reading. So maybe later this week we should see. And I'm sure if one of the first questions he's going to be asked is, you know, what what, what your position on health care? So, and so as soon as, um, you know, the press gets around to asking him that, I'm sure we'll know. All right, so might be one of those things that you might as well sit on the sidelines given the weak charts for a lot of these names Yeah. until we get those Biden headlines out of the way. So um, that's, that, that's something that we'll certainly be watching for, and we'll have to uh, get you on for some spot analysis when we do start seeing his uh, commentary coming across. Um, now, there are some Obamacare rulings that we're expecting in the next couple of days that could impact these names as well, too, right, Carmine? Or maybe not in the next couple of days, but are under are in process right now that the market's following. Right, and I think this this issue might be more negative for the hospital stocks um, versus any, t any type of um, you know proposals from the presidential candidates, because this is a more this is going to be tied up in the courts for for several months. But it's it's and this might come up before the election, so and it might come up after the election. I, I, it's hard to tell you know what these court processes, how long these things will take. But right. it, but it's um, but it's something to also keep an eye on. So I remember last year there was a federal court judge, I believe in Texas, that ruled that the mandate requiring people to buy health insurance was unconstitutional. Uh, his uh, this was uh, followed by a. Um, lawsuit that was brought in 20 states. So uh, right now the um, court in Louisiana is reviewing this measure. Now whichever way this appeals court in Louisiana rules, the other side is going to appeal to the Supreme Court. So we might get a trading opportunity based on these headlines that come across if the appeals court in Louisiana, which based on the judges there, is more than likely is going to rule that these that this is unconstitutional. Now, if that happens, the other states that are on the other side of the uh, the aisle uh, uh, are going to appeal to the Supreme Court to try to get that ruling overturned. So this is not going to be the final ruling that's going to come out of this appeals court in Louisiana. So if these hospital stocks get hit on this, I think um, it would be um, might have some a short-term buying opportunity in these names because. 
uh, two or three days later, you're going to see another headline that, that this, this uh, is going to be appealed to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court is a little different now than what it was uh, a couple when we first went through this. However, uh, John Roberts, who is um, the ideological center now of the Supreme Court, ruled in favor of Obamacare last time. So that's just something to keep in mind as, after this appeals court ruling. All right. Well, that gets us caught up there. Now, again, we'll be following a lot of these earnings coming across. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll have plenty more color to add to these and start getting into some of the stock picking aspect of it. Uh, for me, like Carmine was saying, I prefer to wait for those buy it in headlines to cross before I got too excited about any one name. So uh, we will continue to monitor this situation. Carmine, after Biden comes on, maybe we'll have you do some spot analysis. But um, while we got you on, why don't you give us an update on where we stand with some of these trade talks with China? And obviously the EU is getting a lot of attention with the weakness in the area. We saw the president tweeting about Harley-Davidson put in Europe back in the crosshairs, and we got a couple of reports that are due out. So you want to start with where we stand with uh, China on trade talks here? Yeah, uh, so last week, oh, this hasn't been confirmed yet, but last week um, uh, Wall Street Journal reported that uh, Robert Lighthizer, which is the, the USTR head, is going to travel to Beijing for continuing trade talks. And then um, China's Vice Premier Liu He is going to make a trip to Washington on May 6th for continued trade talks. Now, all these these trade talks are supposed to, lay, supposed to come, um, supposed to end with a presidential summit. Now, where that'll be and when that'll be is still in question, but there is talk in Japan, right? Yeah, there's so, there's some speculation that uh, President Trump is it ready has a trip scheduled uh, to go to Japan at the end of May. So a, a lot of people are speculating that, uh, you know, um, President Xi can make the short trip over, over to Japan from uh, China to, so they can close the deal because I think both of them um, they don't want to be seen in the other person's country when they're signing this deal. So it's going to be a one of those things where um, – they'd have to sign this deal on neutral territory. So I think Japan would be obviously a good uh, country to do that in. So a lot of people are speculating that eventually, um, late May or early June, the, the, two, uh, the two leaders of the nations will come together and, and secure this trade deal for China and the uh, U.S. What, what are the betting odds uh, at the moment for that to go down? They don't have them, unfortunately. The last one they had was for the end of uh, the end of April, and that's that's nearly uh, done now. So that's the second half by the end of April. But unfortunately, but so uh, I wish there were some. If, if there were, I would have it. I would, would tell you. But right now, there there's there's nothing that I can really cite. Um, what are the key headlines that you'd be watching out for for any changes to those potential? Well, uh, I, if you remember a few weeks ago, they said we're pretty much 90% done except for, uh, except for the, the trade enforcement uh, stuff and some uh, theft of intellectual property. So uh, those are the two issues. Those are two really big issues, to be honest with you, that uh, have to be worked out. So anything uh, along those lines would definitely be supportive of a trade deal passing. If there's some um, sticking points within those two agreements, it, it would be negative toward a trade deal not uh, passing. Now, again, uh, I'd like to emphasize that there's no deadlines any, for anything. So remember we had a deadline for in the end of March that got pushed back. Now we have yeah. a, 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 a soft deadline for the early June. That could, that could be a pushback again. So, Has there been any talk about reinstilling some of these tariffs or um, moving them back up, or have the talks been going? I, I haven't noticed any myself. No, no, there, there hasn't been any um, talk about. Remember, they kept the uh, $200 billion tranche at 10%. There hasn't been any talk of putting that to 25, which originally they were going to do, but they decided not to do that. So there hasn't been any talk of that. You know, if, if talk perks up about that, that's definitely negative. So but I don't think anybody's expecting that right now. Uh, as far as getting tariffs removed, um, that'll just depend on the deal. Uh, right now, I don't, I haven't heard anything that they're going to remove these unless there's, there's some kind of uh, major breakthrough. So, uh, m more likely, you know, like 
for example, the USMCA, when they passed that and, or agreed, and they didn't pass it, but they agreed to it between the leaders, the steel and aluminum tariffs remained in place. So if you look at that model, that's the, the more than likely we'd a model that they apply to China. That's just my guess. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for Europe, where do we stand with them right now? What, what's the next step? I know we had the um, car review that I still we still haven't seen a final on that, right? They got a couple, another uh, couple of weeks before they decide on that. Yeah. So th this report was delivered to President Trump about two months ago. Um, there's been reporting that uh, some uh, there's been reporting that the report was given to him verbally. So there's nothing on paper. So there's nothing that, that could be leaked to the press. So we we probably won't see what um, what was in that report unless somebody you know asks them. So more than likely we won't know until he makes his final decision about what now what is in the report now again more than likely the report did um, recommend auto tariffs because that's what um, that's what the administration was pushing for but we don't know exactly what the report said and what um, what recommendations exactly were for what tariffs for what countries what rates what you know anything any, along those lines by the details so uh, May 18th, President Trump is supposed to decide by to get um, whether or not he wants to impose these auto tariffs. Now, again, deadlines are soft. There's no hard deadlines. So he can he can move that deadline out to whatever day he wants. So, you know, as we get closer to that day, we'll be looking for any reports, any reporting on what he plans to do if he wants to move the deadline out, which I think would be a positive, if or if he wants to impose these auto tariffs, which I think would definitely be a negative. Okay, are there any other, um, now Europe's uh, offered some retaliatory um, taxing, I know in the past whiskey and uh, Harley-Davidson motorcycles have been specifically mentioned, is there anything else uh, that we should be on the, on the lookout for? Yeah, they uh, released. Uh, let me pull up uh, their their release. They released a few months ago when this was this issue was first uh, litigated through the USTR. They released a list of uh, potential retaliatory goods on tariffs <coughs> that they would impose if the U.S. imposed auto tariffs. Now. I am just looking at the release. They did not list the, the goods that they would do, but they would said they said it would be three hundred billion dollars of U.S. exports. So, uh, so uh, that would be a number of uh, uh, that would be the number they would they would impose. I'm not sure exactly what they would tariff, as they did not say, but it, but it, this would be in response to the auto tariffs. Now, there's another uh, smaller thing that's going around where the USTR has this dispute with Air, WTO on Airbus. And right. it is, but but that's a subsidized an Airbus. I, I thought WTO uh, ruled in favor of the U.S. on that one. No? They, they, uh, they, 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 they did. Uh, the USTR is just going through their three-month process to try to uh, get a tar a tariff put in place. Now, um, the, the, the U.S. wants to put tariffs on helicopters, aircraft, motorcycles, meat products, and dairy products. So some stocks there to watch, of course, are SPR, UTX, HRL, TSN, and so forth. Uh, and if the the EU, the EU responded and said that they would impose tariffs on aircrafts, chemicals, ketchup, and um, agricultural products, so some uh, KHC would be a play there. CVGW would be another play as well. So again, but that's going to be a few months to go yet because both the USTR has to have a three-month comment period where basically these. Uh, Companies that are going to be impacted by this can can uh, can sit there and air the grievances to um, the USTR on this issue. But more than likely, uh, if everything goes as planned, these these uh, these tariffs would go into place. Now, 11 billion is not really that much in the scheme of things, but it is something to keep in mind for these particular stocks. All right. Well, Carmine, thank you very much for jumping on and joining us there and giving us the rundown on what's going on. I'm going to be posting your materials to the website right now for anybody that wanted to uh, double check all the uh, Medicare for All comments and some of the stocks that are involved. We Again, we uh, posted the recent moves and support levels and earnings dates for a number of these names that we're going to be following over the next couple of uh, sessions here looking for plays in them uh, but Carmine you take care and we'll have you in for a follow-up on uh, Biden and uh, any other color that we're seeing particularly on the trade war front sounds good thank you Gavin all right Carmine talk to you soon
Bye-bye.